disgusting creatures, scavengers, very furry, all words we use to describe these sentient beings. We recognize them by their brown robes and the glow of their illuminated eyes. Oh, and their affinity for droids. Good evening, I'm Brian with The Smuggler's Room, and this evening we will examine one of these creatures, captured in a single moment in time, frozen in a 360 degree view. Tonight, we'll get a little closer look at our friend, the Jawa. Houdini! Is a Jawa? Well, they are a sentient species, roughly a meter tall, and they're furry. They're a humanoid native to Tatooine. They wear heavy robes, and what's hidden beneath is a subject of much speculation from most that encounter them. There have been rumors claiming they're giant rodents or de evolved humans. I was once invited to a Jawa derobing party, but I passed at the last minute. Some secrets, I believe, are best left unsaid. Their robes are moisture regulated and insulated, and the Jawa wears the robe their entire life. Being challenged when it comes to fashion, I can see the appeal in not having any decision paralysis on what to wear on Saturday. However, I've often wondered how a young Jawa on the prowl would tell the difference between Betty Jawa and his buddy Phil. <laughs> Jawas have a musky animal odor, which is likened to the fraternity of a wet rat, according to the gangster, Adwin Charu. Maybe that's how they tell the difference between each other. What we certainly know is Jawas are passionate scavengers. They comb the deserts of Tatooine for droids and scraps, which they sell to local residents and has formed a codependent trade route, if you will. They do, however, have a reputation of swindling customers. Often they sell refurbished or faulty droids. Sort of sounds like a combination of an inept mechanic and a slick back car salesman.
I've often wondered if they're good at building things or they're just lazy. Or do they simply cut corners on their work so that you're forced to come back to them for repairs again and again? The more I think about it, the more I'm concerned that my old auto mechanic was actually a Jawa. I may have to investigate that further. With consumer distribution of resin printers, manufacturers have changed the game when it comes to in-home printing and high-quality prints. I'm a massive fan of what resin 3D printing has brought to our workflow. In this episode, we are featuring the Elgu Mars 3 that has been sent to us by the wonderful folks at Elgu. The printer was exceedingly easy to set up, configure, and get to printing within 30 minutes of unpackaging. I ran a pair of successful test prints without fail and then loaded a miniature from Loot Studios' Sci-Fi membership. The printer worked flawlessly and I was eager to run more prints, which I did for this project. Each of the small crates and the barrel was printed on the EL group, as was the awesome little addition from the Rebel Base Builds Patreon. Thanks, James. I was most impressed with the ease of use along with the quality of prints. Elgu simply presented us with the printer and let us formulate our own opinion on the success of the printer. I have to say we are beyond thrilled with the product and very thankful for the partnership. If you're in the market for a resin printer, then I would highly recommend you take a look at Elgu's offerings. They have a wide variety of sizes that I think work great for all types of projects and you won't be disappointed in the results of your print. We want to thank Elgu for sponsoring this episode, and you will find links to this printer and more in the description below. Happy printing, my friends. A Jawa could often speak both their native Jawanese, which is crazy as it sounds, utilizes scent as well as the spoken word to confuse outsiders. Other times they use traditional Jawa trade talk, and most species in the Outer Rim are able to understand and negotiate.
What about travel? It would seem walking through the desert planet in robes and in addition to being only a meter tall would be a slow going endeavor. Well, not when you're transported in a sand crawler. It would appear that defunct mining companies on Tatooine abandoned these vehicles and the Jawas now use them as a mobile base. How about any misconceptions of the Jawa? Are there any? Well, yes, there are. Jawa juice is certainly one to start with. This beverage is certainly a real thing, served in places like Dex's Diner on Coruscant, as well as most bars in the Outer Rim. I prefer mine stirred, not shaken, and I like it over a single cube of ice with a fat bantha chaser. However, these drinks are not made by squeezing the life out of these furry yellow-eyed creatures. That would be horrible. It's just a clever name and a great play on words. Jawas are also not found only on Tatooine. You can find them on other planets as well, and they're referred to off-world Jawas in those situations. That said, many of their old habits follow them on all parts of the Outer Rim. Still obsessed with scavenging technology where possible, running their little scams on unsuspected patrons, and being all-around nuisance to droids and the occasional Mandalorian who forgets to double-click the lock button on his Razor Crest. So what do we make of a Jawa? Well, they're sneaky, stinky, little scavengers that are more happy to steal your droid and sell it back to you at double the price with half the functionality. So with all that said, I think I like them. I wouldn't mind having one around the shop. It might make things a tad more interesting from time to time. We've learned a fair amount about these creatures this evening. I hope this newfound knowledge follows you in your travels. Make friends with one if you meet them. Buy them a Jawa juice if you have the time. And make a deal on a Greebly or two. I hear they come in quite handy when building something out of nothing. 
I'm Brian. This is The Smuggler's Room. Good evening.